So good morning, we will start, we will continue our discussion. There are a few points about the assignment statement that I would like to cover today. So today we are going to look at a new programming concept called conditional execution of instructions. But before that, I wanted to continue discussion on the assignment operator because there are a few interesting variations that the C, C++ family of languages provides. After we discuss that, we will take a computational problem which cannot be solved using just sequential execution of our instructions as we have been seeing so far. So we will look at what does conditional evaluation mean and then we will look at the basic control structures available in C++ which will permit us to execute either one group of statements or another group of statements. More specifically, we will look at the if-else and if-else-if ladder. I will then make some general announcements including announcements for the next week labs. First, the notion of reassignment. So this thing should be very obvious to you. So if m is equal to 7, then 3 star m plus 1 will be 3 into 7 plus 1, which is 21 plus 1, which is 22. It so incidentally happens that this value of the expression so computed is to be assigned to the memory location represented by m. So please note that m appearing on the right hand side is incidental. The interpretation is first evaluate the expression on the right, whatever is the value, assign this value to m. What it means is store 22 in the location that was assigned to m. And what it also means is that the previous value will be wiped out. So from this point onwards in our program, m will continue to have value 22 unless reassigned again. So this reassignment is very central to many of the computations that we will do using uh, C or any other programming language. So in a nutshell, such things are not equations. Just because there is an equality symbol here, we must remember that the equality symbol in C++ represents an assignment operation. And you evaluate right hand side, calculate the value, put it on the location. There are special increment and decrement operators which are provided by C, C++. These are shortcut kind of statements for assignments or reassignments. For example, if I want to increment the value of some variable m by 1, I would ordinarily write a statement like this, m is equal to m plus 1. This means that whatever is the current value of m, add 1 to it, get the resultant value and put it back in m, effectively changing the value of original value of m by 1. Now such increments or decrements by 1 can be written in shorthand in C, C++ using operators plus plus and minus minus. So for example, if I just say plus plus m, just plus plus m, this is a complete statement by the way and it is an assignment statement. It means the same thing as m is equal to m plus. Similarly, minus minus n is an assignment operator and what it means is n is equal to n minus 1. Many people prefer this shorthand just because it saves you some typing strokes. Also because these things then can be used inside expressions. But I might end up writing expressions which may not make immediate sense to an ordinary reader. Consider this example, int i comma j, j is assigned a value phi and then I have a assignment operation which says i is equal to 7 plus 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 j. Now ordinarily we won't write such a thing. But this is a legally correct statement in C++ and what it means actually is that plus plus j is considered to be an operation. So the entire assignment operation becomes i is equal to 7 plus in brackets plus plus j and plus plus j stands for j is equal to j plus 1. So the normal rules prevail. This assignment operation is first carried out which means j plus 1 is 6 because j was 5 here. So j plus 1 is 6, j equal to 6 is the assignment operation. J is assigned a value 6, 
which also becomes the value of this entire expression inside parenthesis. And then that 6 is added to 7, so it becomes 30. So effectively, please note that you have achieved two things by writing this statement, i equal to 7 plus 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 j. You have achieved first an increment to j, and then you have achieved an assignment to i, which is the modified value of j plus 7. However, if you ask me, I would prefer to write it like this. One shorthand is good enough. You will agree that the last statement set is more meaningful than i equal to 7 plus 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 j, although they mean exactly the same thing semantically in C++. There is an additional variation in the increment and decrement operator. Let us go to the previous slide. Here we saw that the increment and decrement operators are written before the name of a variable. This is called pre-increment. They could also be written after the name of a variable. For example, i++. plus plus. This is also same as i is equal to i plus 1, j minus minus, also same as j equal to j minus 1. So what is the difference? Are there two different notations for exactly identical meaning? Well, as far as the increment and decrement operators are concerned, the meaning is same. But when these are used in a larger expression, the meaning changes substantially. So for example, effect on i or j will occur after the expression is evaluated. Consider this, if I write i is equal to 7 star j plus plus, now this is same as i is equal to 7 star j semicolon j plus plus and it is not same as j plus plus followed by i equal to 7 star j. Can you see the difference? So suppose the value of j was say 5, then i is equal to 7 star j plus plus will mean j will be added to 7 plus, so 5, 5 will be multiplied by 7, the value of i will be 35. After completing evaluation of this expression, the effect of increment of j will take place. So this is called post increment. The earlier one is called pre increment. However, as I said, a good programmer would probably always write these as either i equal to 7 star j, j plus plus or as j plus plus followed by i equal to 7 star j depending upon what meaning you want to give because this is more readily understandable. However, this is a perfectly valid statement in C. An additional variation in the assignment operation. Consider a situation where I want to increment a variable not by 1, but I want to increment it by some other value. Or I want to increment it by a value which itself is computed by evaluating an expression. Consider this for example. m is equal to m plus 2 star m. Now this is clearly a reassignment operation because m is being reassigned a value based on its own previous value plus something else. This can simply be written as m plus equal to 2 star n. So m plus equal to 2 star n is nothing but m is equal to m plus 2 star n. That is, this, this could be any expression on the right hand side. Its meaning of writing plus equal to is simply m is equal to m plus something. In exactly the same way, C++ permits use of compound assignment operators in the form of plus equal to, minus equal to, star equal to, slash equal to, modulo equal to, etc. Of course, if you use modulo equal to, then it would mean m is equal to m modulo some expression. That expression would be converted to integer and m ought to be an integer in order to get meaningful results. Generally, you will not see such expressions except for plus equal to and minus equal to. Again, this is a shortcut provided. I do not see any reason why I cannot write this. This is something I would like to warn you by the way. Most programming languages, not just C, C++, most programming languages actually provide for such artifacts. For some people who designed these features, these things appear to be very interesting. These things also appeared, must have appeared to be shortcuts so that you have to type less. When you are writing very large programs and when you have too many increment operations, for example, you might resort to this. Somehow, 
these became more or less a standard practice amongst programmers. But as a consequence of that practice, C, C++ programs are far less readable by other programmers unless they also are expert users of such variation. So keep that in mind because you are writing programs not only to solve some problem numerically on the computer, but be sure that your programs will be read, understood and rerun by many others. This is a completely different programming paradigm than what existed 40 years ago where or 30 years ago or even 25 years ago where most people wrote programs to solve their own problems. Today programming is a generic exercise where somebody writes a program, somebody else uses it, some third person modifies it, a fourth group takes it and based on the idea develops something else. In which case the readability and understandability of your program is of vital importance. It is at least as important as writing correct programs. So keep that in mind. However, for the sake of completeness, I have covered these. In general, in most C programs, you will find the use of operations like I++, J++, very common. And that is okay because that is well understood. It is an increment by one or a decrement by one kind of thing and which will generally happen in a standalone fashion. Very rarely such usage will be made within any larger expression. Next, we consider a problem requiring conditional execution. So far, what we have seen? We have seen that if we write instructions one after another, they will all be executed by C++ one after another in exactly the given sequence. However, that may not work out. So let's look at this problem. Let's say bus tickets are being sold for some travel from point A to point B. And the bus ticket is different depending upon the age of the traveler. So let's say the ticket for an adult passenger is 25 rupees 50 paise and rupees 12.75 for a child. Just an example. Now, the child has to have an age of less than 12 years. More or less standard practice at many places. But how do you do these computations? For example, if the problem is that given the age of the passenger, find the cost of the ticket. Now, I might try writing a program like this. Age is integer because fractional ages don't count for this decision making. So I define age as an integer value. I define ticket underscore cost as float. Please note underscore is a valid symbol in names and indeed it is recommended that you use it in order to distinguish different components of a larger name. Next, give age of passenger C in greater greater age. I collect the age. Now there are two possible ticket values. 25.5 and 12.75. So let's say I write the assignment statements. Ticket cost is 12.75. I immediately write ticket cost is equal to 25.50 and I output the ticket cost. So what will be output? The last assignment. And it does not matter what the age is because in fact in my entire program, I am not referring to the value of age anywhere. Okay. So we will always get the cost as 25.50 irrespective of the value of the age. Consider rewriting it differently. So I write the other statement first. I switch the assignment state. I do the same thing. Then I say ticket cost is 25.50, ticket cost is 12.50. Very obviously it is wrong. Because whatever be the age again, it is the last assigned value to ticket cost which will prevail and that is what will be printed out. So now this is happening because both the assignment statements are being executed one after another and the last assignment will take hold. Very clearly, this is not what we wish to do. So what do we wish to do? We want to instruct the machine in something like this word. If the age is greater than 12 years, then calculate the cost of ticket as rupees 25.50, else calculate the cost of the ticket as 12.7. Very clearly, the instruction mechanism in C, C++ that we have understood or in programming in general we have understood where we write statements one after another and they are executed, that process is not any more adequate for me to solve such problem. And you will all agree that in most computational and real life problems, you will have to make decisions of this kind based on some value and take either one path or another path. So consequently, we wish to rewrite our program such that either the first or the second assignment instruction based on the value of age is executed, but never both. 
And we note that in the program that we have written so far, we are reading the value of age, but we are not using it anyway. So this is the bottom line. We do not want to blindly execute our instructions in the given sequence. We first want the machine to examine the value of age. Then, depending upon whether the age is greater than 12 or not, we want the computer to execute either the first or the second instruction, but never both. And this conditional execution is now possible. There is a mechanism of representing such conditional execution using what is known as a flowchart. So let me just draw a flowchart for you to show how we can depict this situation pictorially. When we write instructions like this one after another, in a flowchart, they are represented by rectangular boxes. So this is one instruction. This is called a flowchart and whatever instructions you would write in your program, they are represented by rectangular boxes inside which you write those instructions. For example, input M, okay, N is equal to M plus 7. Notice that what I have written inside these boxes is not correct C, C++ syntax. It is not even a correct syntax in any programming language. The flowchart is meant to be a preliminary step to represent my own thinking about the algorithm or the order of or the sequence of execution of the intended instructions. So this could be called as a pseudo code. It is not an actual code in a programming language but it's good enough for understand. Now, you will notice that every program that we have written so far or seen so far can actually be reprinted in this fashion. Okay. When we do not want to execute instructions in a sequence, but we want to execute instructions in some kind of a conditional fashion, we introduce an additional <coughs> symbol in the flowchart a diamond. So whenever a flow of control in my program execution comes to a diamond, it means that some condition is being evaluated. What condition I want to evaluate in the given uh, particular uh, uh, program? Is that correct? This is what I want to check. Now, depending upon whether this condition evaluates to true, I want to take certain action. If it evaluates to false, I want to take some other action. What action do I wish to take if age is greater than 12? I will just write TC as equal to, how much was the value? <laughs> and if age is not greater than 12, I forgot the value. <laughs> Both these paths are supposed to come back and meet each other and then I want to execute the next instruction which will say output TC. All of you understand this? The only thing is in my computer program I can write sentences only one after another. I can't write something on right hand side, something on left hand side. 
and say if this is the if either execute this or execute that whatever i have to say i have to say in a linear fashion because a computer program is a text consequently this particular diagram itself can be sort of linearized What I have done here, I have written the condition, below that I have written one of the statements, below that I have written another statement. But the understanding is that even if the statements in my program appear one after another as they must physically, the meaning is that this statement is to be executed only if this condition is true and then I have to come out and carry on with the next, I have to skip the next one. Similarly, if the condition is false, I have to skip the next instruction and execute a subsequent instruction and follow up. So this is the way you define conditional execution in any programming language. All programming language, languages permit such conditional execution statement or a group of statements. Why group of statements? In this particular numerical example, I need to assign, I need to execute only one assignment operation. Ticket cost is this or ticket cost is that. But it could be so that in a computational problem, if a certain condition is true, you want to execute some 20 statements and then go out somewhere. On the other hand, if the condition is false, you might want to execute another body of 15 statements and then go out. So effectively, this box then would represent not just a single instruction. It would represent any number of instructions as long as they form a single block. Consequently, in every programming language, we need to have a mechanism to represent a block of actions following the true path and another block of actions following the false path. You get this? So now let's go back to the C programming instructions. This is the C++ program to calculate cost of the bus ticket. So look at the way the statements are written. You have the usual include IO stream and using namespace std. This is followed by int main. I am declaring age to be an integer and ticket cost to be a float. I ask the user to give me the age of the traveler. So I read in the value of age. Now this is the, this is the important part. The conditional execution is implemented by if statement, which is the new statement that we are learning. After if, you always write a pair of parentheses. And inside this pair of parentheses, you write the condition which needs to be evaluated. Obviously, this condition must evaluate to either true or false, right? You can understand age greater than 12. This is not a statement, but this is a question being posed to C++. What it is saying is that please examine the current value of age at this juncture and find out whether it is greater than 12 or not. If it is, then execute the statements immediately following this if statement. If it is not, skip this and go to the else part. So if and else form a pair. After the word if I write the condition and below it I write the block of statements that I want to execute if the condition is true. It so happens that in this example the block consists of a single statement. Notice the opening brass and closing brass here. When I have a single statement these brasses are actually not required. 
If I just write this statement, it will still be correctly understood to mean that this is to be executed only if the condition is true. However, it is a good practice to press the brasses here. Why? Because later on, if you so figure out that you have to insert some additional statement in the true side of the execution path, then you will be able to insert those statements here. If the condition does not happen to be true at the time of execution of the program, it is not predicted because while I write the program, I don't know the age. So the computer will evaluate this condition and if it is found to be false, then it will skip this entire block. It does not matter whether this block has 10 instructions or 10,000 instructions. One opening brass followed by any number of instructions followed by a closing brass is the block for the true side. Else, ticket cost is equal to 12.75. This statement is executed if the condition is false. And when I complete this brass or closing brasses, that means when I executed either this block or this block, where will I come out? I will come to the next state. Please note that the statement after the if else block is not physically marked. Because there could be many statements here and many statements here. And that is the reason why we use, while writing our program, a notion called indentation. That means inside the true path, any number of instructions that we have to write, we will never write them starting from here. We will leave a few spaces. Typically, you use a tab character. That is the standard practice in C, C++ programs. I will not use tab character because if I did, and if I have a large number of nested ifs, as we shall soon see, my program will overflow the end of the slide. So I use two or three or four spaces. But this indentation, any number of statements which are written here will be written like this. What's the advantage? It is visibly clear to me that this statement forms the if true part and this statement forms the not true part or false part. So this is a style. Although it is not required, you could always start the statement anywhere in the line, but that is a good practice. So is this understood? The if statement and the use of if statement? Okay. What could be the variations possible in this if statement? Suppose I want to find out, let me solve another problem here. Given two numbers A and B, find out the maximum. So let's say I have defined them as int A, B, max. I'm just using a shortcut, not giving messages. Now, maximum means the larger of the two. So I could write an if statement of the type if A greater than B max is equal to A else and then when I output max I will get the maximum of these two numbers. However, I could also write this part of the code slightly differently. Suppose I said max is equal to A. Please note that I am forcing max to have the value A. I don't know actually at this stage. I have just said the value of A and B. I am just arbitrarily saying, let me assume first value is maximum. If it is not, then I will change it. So what will be my if statement? If B is 
greater than A. Notice that this variation of if does not have an else statement or does not have a false pass at all. It is not required. Why? Because I am originally assuming that this condition is false and I am writing this assignment statement direct. So max is equal to A. If however B is greater than A, then I reset max to B. If B is not greater than A, then this statement will never be executed. So when I come out, I will print the correct value of max. Is this line better or is this line of writing better as far as finding out maximum is concerned? Why is a question? Well, there could be many reasons. I like it the way this is written here or I like it the way this is written. Somebody may say this is better. Sorry? Ah, if both the numbers are equal, then second is better. The actual correct interpretation when both the numbers are equal is, it does not matter. Please note that when I print out the max, it is a value that is being printed. It does not care whether the value came from A or B. It would matter if the values were different. If the values are same, A is 10, B is 10. So how does it matter whether you assign to max the value of A or value of B? So in this particular case, it does not matter. However, if I also wanted to know what was the value which was ultimately printed, then that's a different story. We shall discuss that when we discuss arrays and sets of numbers, etc. But there is another stronger reason for using this approach. Let me exemplify it by saying that I want to find out maximum of five numbers. If I follow the first part, I will, I will continue to think in these lines. So if A is greater than B, I cannot say max is greater is equal to A. Then I will have to check, is A greater than C also? If not, C may become greater. Then I have to compare that with D. In short, my logic could become extremely complicated if I follow this path. However, if I use this approach, I could very simply write an algorithm and a program to find out the maximum. Do you see the point? I start arbitrarily as in the previous case with A being the maximum. I just presuppose it. Of course, I may be wrong. The first statement will check. Is B greater than the current maximum? If it is, max will be reassigned to B. If it is not, max will continue its old value which was A. I am again checking the third number. Is it greater than max? Now, it does not matter at this stage whether max is set to A or B. Whatever it is, it is the current maximum. And if the new number is greater than the current maximum, I reset max to that value. You will agree that this is a much cleaner algorithm. If you try to implement this using some complex logic, you would write a series of nested if statements. 
Let me just explain to you what is a nested if statement. If some condition is true, then the, con the, the statements which I want to e execute will also include another condition evaluation. If that is true, I want to do something. Otherwise, I want to do something. But this else matches with this if. So if the original condition itself was false, I want to skip all of this and come here. And this kind of nesting can be written to any level. But as a result, the program will get complicated. There are computational problems where we have no choice but to write a series of nested ifs. However, our attempt should always be to minimize such nested ifs because that makes for cleaner reading. So let me consider the last problem for the day which is an extension of the bus ticket problem. Let me say that in the bus ticket problem, we have said that if the traveler is a child, then the charges are whatever, 12 rupees 75 paise. Otherwise, an adult, the charge is 25 rupees. However, the bus company decides to show some courtesy to very old people. And they, they would, suppose the bus company says, however, their age is greater than 60 years. Then let's say the ticket cost is only rupees 20. Not as less as a child, but not as much as an adult. Now that's, that's the policy that the bus company has. And you and me as programmers have to implement that policy. While writing such program, I could use what is known as the if-else-if ladder. What is the ladder? I have a series of if, else, if, else, if, else statements, but they are not nested ifs. For example, I want to make three different conditions. If the age is greater than 60, the ticket cost should be so much. Else, if the age is greater than 12, the ticket cost is so much. Else, if the age is else, meaning otherwise, the ticket cost is so much. I could also argue in reverse way. I would say if age is less than 12, the cost is so much. Else, if the age is greater than 12, age is less than 60, the cost is so much. Else, something else. Let me write this and ask you which one is correct and why. First, I will write This is one way of writing the program. The other way is to say
both these programs implement similar logic you agree but one of them is wrong it's not adequate to say which one is wrong when i already told you one of them is wrong you have to say why one of them is wrong so let's analyze what happens let's just execute this algorithm for some different values of age let us say i execute this program for somebody whose age is 22 years what will happen is age greater than 60 no so this will not be executed i come here is age greater than 12 yes so tc will be set to this else tc is the else will not be executed so i'll come out with the correct result let's imagine that a child is traveling age is 8 years i come here is age greater than 60 no this will not be executed else is age greater than 12 no this will also not be executed so tc will be 12.75 looks like working correctly but to completely test my program i must execute it for all possible boundary values so let me now take a value which is say 65 an old man is travel is age greater than 60 yes tc is equal to 20 else is age greater than 12 uh, will i ever come to this else because once this condition is satisfied the else part is never executed please remember this once a condition is satisfied i will be executing only this statement and after executing this statement i will skip out of this if block so where does this else end this else end does not end here because inside this if else there is if so this if starts here ends here and after this this else ends so i will simply come out here which means in all three cases i am correctly calculated let us look at this again take a similar example let us take somebody whose age is 25 25 years is an adult not old not young is age less than 12 no so i'll come out where here else if age is less than 60 yes tc is equal to this else this come out let's take an old man 65 years is age less than 12 no come here is age less than 60 no come here don't come here because it's not true so i'll come to the else part correctly calculated take another case the third case so why do you say that one of them is right somebody said one of them is right and they were speculating right or left however in your lab you will find examples which will work one way but not work the other way in general when you have nested if conditions you have to be extremely careful in the order in which you are nesting those if statements you make a mistake in that order and you could get into lot of problems so just remember that yeah ha huh? फर्स्ट इफ अगर एग्जीक्यूट नहीं होगा तो सेकंड एल्स में तो उसके ब्रेसेस ओपन और एंड तो किए नहीं ये दोनों दोनों केसेस में ओके इफ यू वांट यू कैन पुट एन एडिशनल ब्रास हियर इट इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड दैट इज व्हाई इट इज कॉल्ड एन एलसीफ लैडर एलसीफ लैडर इज व्हेन आई से एलसीफ दिस अगेन देयर कुड बी एलसीफ दिस एलसीफ दिस सीरीज ऑफ स्टेटमेंट्स एंड यू डोंट रिक्वायर to encompass all statements of the rels in other pair of brasses it is not necessary so this is the correct interpretation it will work correctly sorry fir matlab uh, end kab hoga humko kaise pata padega ye end hoga end is always here the ladder ends here and the ladder is written such that only one of those conditions will be true so, uh, that end braces of last else na this end is of this else this end is of this if this end therefore is also end of this nested else if ladder you just count the total number of opening and closing brasses as long as they match you are safe this is a peculiar variation of if which is called if else if ladder ladder means there are steps however if i were to write if condition then something inside which i have if sets on 
I will have to write separate blocks, starting class and ending class. You can you can try writing some statements and you can figure it out. The rules are very pretty straightforward. Yeah. So what if in the first one, yeah, if somebody it. writes the second statement uh, before the first statement, like else if age greater than twelve, and the age is given to be sixty-five, then uh, the ticket cost will come out. So to he has found out a possible problem if I did not write the conditions in this fashion. If I wrote, if age greater than 12, then TC is equal to 12.75 and then checked other conditions. Please note that somebody who is 25 years old, age will be still greater than 12. If somebody is 62 years, age will still be greater. Than. So that will apply to all people and that will obviously be a wrong way of doing things. That is exactly what I mentioned. When I said that, if you have a multiple set of conditions to be checked, you better be extremely careful about the order in which you evaluate those conditions. Because you could get wrong results. And it is always a good practice, because later on you will be writing 200, 300 line programs. And you would have variety of if statements there. But whenever you have a ladder like this, it is useful to quickly hand execute the algorithm for two or three different values and just check whether you are getting the correct results or not. The other way it will be extremely difficult to find errors in a larger program of this kind. In general, a conditional expression can be written in C in this form. A operation B. This operator OP is a relational operator. So this could be either less than, greater than, less than equal to, greater than equal to. You are familiar with these symbols. Equal to, however, is not written by A equals B. The reason it is not written A equals B should be very obvious to you. A equal B is assignment. So B will assign to A. There is no comparison. Consequently, C, C++ uses equal, equal. The same symbol twice. So when I say A equal, equal B, it means compare A with B. And if they are equal, decide the answer to be true. If they are not equal, decide the answer to be false. People initially make these mistakes many times while writing the if statement because they will simply write if A equals B. Because in our minds, that is how we write equality or equality check also. Greater than, less than, equal to, etc. But that is not the right way in program. And it is very important to distinguish because A equal to B has a specific meaning which says assign value of B to A. What happens in such cases, we will discuss the small part in the end, but these are the relational operators. Similarly, if you want to check for two values not being equal to each other, the negation of equal equal is exclamation mark equal to. So this is read as not equal. Consequently, you have less than, greater than, less than equal to, greater than equal to, equal equal and exclamation mark equal. This means is equal to and this means is not equal. You are all familiar with Boolean logic? Okay. So the conditions can then be combined. So I can have complex conditions where I can test is A greater than 0 and is A also less than equal to 9. Watch that this will be the condition I will impose if I want to check whether A is a positive digit. So A is equal to 13. The value is positive, but it is not a digit. A is equal to minus 7 is not a digit. A is not a positive digit. So this compound condition. Otherwise, what I will have to write? If A greater than 0. In the then part say, if A less than equal to 9. So I will have to put nested if, which is not required. I can write that as a compound condition. So and followed by and stands for conjunction, which represents logical and. and Vertical bar followed by vertical bar is disjunction or or. The symbolism is slightly odd. You will get used to it in no, no, term, no time. So you can write any number of compound conditions. Now these compound conditions technically evaluate to true or false. True and false are two specific values defined in C++ library, standard libraries as being Boolean type values. You remember I wrote that word bool in the types. Currently we are not going to bother with it. We will take it to mean 
that a relational condition will evaluate to either true or false and the if statement will work correctly. However, since relational condition actually forms a relational expression or a conditional expression and every expression in C has a value. It is true that a relational expression will have a value true or false, but C permits you to use that expression as a part of arithmetic expression also. When you do that, the true value converts to 1 and false value converts to 0. So if you say A greater than B, one way is to use it inside an if statement. If A greater than B, then of course the branching of execution will happen depending upon whether the condition is true or false. But you can also say M is equal to A greater than B. Now that is a very funny way of saying the truth value is being captured in a variable called M. But that's a valid statement in C. What C will do is it will evaluate A greater than B. If it is true, it will convert to a number 1. If it is false, it will convert to number 0 and assign either 1 or 0 to M. Alternately, you could also put inside an if statement, if M, can you make sense out of this? This is a valid statement and what this means is A less than B is evaluated first. It will be either true or false. If it is true, it is converted to value 1. If it is false, it is converted to value 0. Consequently, M will be assigned a value 0 or 1. I was telling you about the other possibility. If I say, if P, let's say. Now, P is a variable. And let's say I have just read in the value of P. Assume P is integer. I could give any value. Minus 200, plus 27, 0, whatever, right? How would C interpret it? As far as interpreting arithmetic values as true or false is concerned, the interpretation is, if the value is 0, it is treated as false. And any non-zero value is treated as true. So this is an additional squiggle. We'll end our discussion here, but just remember, relational operators constitute an extremely powerful mechanism because they permit you to conditionally execute certain statements in your program, either this or that kind of. The if statement with an else clause or just if statement without an else clause or if statement with a series of else if, else if clauses will permit you to implement any manner of your flowchart in terms of its logical execution sequence and composing the appropriate if statements will be in fact learning of more programming. So in the next week's lab and next week's lectures, we will consider some more aspects of this if statement and we will see some more solutions. Thank you very much.